Hi, hi. Oh, so good to be here again in Cerita dari Seberang. Uh, I'm so lucky today that I have been in episode 24. But today we would like to talk about career women at the United Nations. Ooh, this case is so incredible. Uh, she is so incredible, sorry, uh, and now she is living and working in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. I will try to invite her directly here. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we still have time. We see, and uh, if you guys really want to. Okay. If you guys to talk with us and give um, us some questions, I'll give you uh, a time for you to talk with us. I'm uh, I'm a little bit nervous today because <laughs> she is my idol. Oh my God! Hello there. <laughs> Hi, Evan. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, <laughs> finally, I can, can you hear see me well? you directly. Yep. Finally, I can talk with you. I have such <laughs> very nice oh time Oh my god, how you. are you? How have you been? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So how's going? How's life going there? I, I, I think you are breaking because I couldn't oh, hear really? you before. Yes. Okay, so uh, let me try to get uh, another thing. So can you hear me, Kat? Uh, yes, I think now me? it's working fine. Okay, so thank you so much, <laughs> Kak Ruth, for your time. Thank you also for no, giving me this opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure. How have you been? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm great, I'm great. So what about you there? Good, good. I'm good and fine. I know that you are so, so busy. <laughs> and then now you give me your time to finally talk with me. I'm mm. so happy and immensely happy to have you, Ka. And now we would like to talk about career woman at the United Nations, guys. And she is my senior when I was in the university, in Prawijaya University at that time. And I'm so adore her a lot. She is my idol. She is, oh, oh my god, like the, uh, when I was there in the university life, she has, she had to be traveled a lot. Like, I don't know, who is she? Oh my god, now she finally made to, uh, to be able to work in one of the prestigious organizations in the world, which is, this is like the, uh, the United Nations. Her name is Ruth Marlin Chris Sida Butar. Oh my god, the Bata Anis. <laughs> I'm so happy to, yes. to be here with you. <laughs> <sighs> I'm a little bit nervous, Kak Ruth, so but but okay. Okay, no. it's it Hi. Okay, Kak Ruth, so anyway, yes. host uh host in I mean like what about the condition there? We know that now we are still striving for the COVID nineteen. So what about uh, COVID condition in Geneva, Switzerland? Yeah, so actually here in Switzerland, they, they ease the coronavirus measures right now. So the restaurants and bars are reopened. Mm -hmm. And also you can hold public events uh, with a larger numbers than before. Mm -hmm. And they started mm -hmm. the vaccination program. So it seems that slowly everything is back to normal. Um, from my mm -hmm. side, I don't know the the number of the cases at the moment because i stopped reading yeah. the covid 19 news um but we are yeah. still still okay that's good that's good i hope that you are still safe and you are still enjoying with your life today in geneva switzerland are you busy in indonesia yes of course i miss indonesia <laughs> like how long family yes all of it yeah like how long you uh you are not in Indonesia, Kak? Well, ever since I moved here in 2018, I yeah. haven't been. So it's been almost three 2018. years. 2018. Mm. Ah, but I saw in your Instagram that your parents came to Switzerland, right? Yeah, yeah. So before the pandemic, they actually visited me here. So that was the last time I 
I mean, I I have seen uh, them since then. Okay. So I would love to go back this year, but let's see. Okay, sure. Okay, guys. Uh, as I told you before, that she is my senior in uh, university in Raucha University, and she continued to study in Italy uh, for master degree level. And then she has been a lot. I mean, like, she has a lot of experiences in international organization, foreign aid since she was in the university life. So I mean, like now she uh, achieved. Her dream come true as a one of women, as as a woman from Indonesia, we can work in United Nations, uh, in quarter like the hard quarter of United Nations. But it's like, oh my God, I don't know, like it's so incredible. I see you. So Karun, as I mentioned that uh, now you are working in in Geneva, Switzerland, for United Nations and. Particularly as project officer in International Telecommunication Union, right? Yeah. So, can you tell me the story? Yeah. Why you choose to live abroad or work abroad? Well, it's um. Well, uh, where do I begin? It's a long story, but I think mm. um, you know, like the charm of a foreign place developed mm. within me since I was a kid. Since uh, I think. Can you hear me, Evan? Sorry, yeah, yeah. There was okay. like a disconnection. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can hear you so now. yeah, I, I was just saying. I was just. I was just saying that you know, um, the charm of a foreign place has been grew mm -hmm. within me since I was a kid because um, I'm quite lucky that my parents, um, they. Mm -hmm always um how to say like they always try to bring their kids to see other places not just in indonesia mm -hmm. but also abroad mm -hmm. at least at that time you know mm -hmm. just the southeast asia yeah and and then i just feel like oh that's nice because you you've seen something else you know yeah something mm -hmm. that's not um the same similar as our culture and i always love multicultural settings uh, and uh. then as I learn from study, because uh, we studied international relations, I mm. feel like, oh, I want to I wanna work with the United Nations. I want to work for them. And um, mm. that's actually why in the end I decided, okay, that's my goal. I want to work mm. there. And I don't know, that's the story. Like, um, And now here I am in Geneva. But yeah, mm. mostly because... I just feel attracted first uh, with the foreign. Mm. I don't know. Everything is just seems alluring to me. So and and yep. yeah, again, like I, I just love like being multicultural, and yeah, it just excites me. <laughs> so so why not? <laughs> so it means it means like you are now living in your dream, right? <laughs> well, kind of, yes, kind of, because it's been my dream. It's been my dream. As I told you, like, I'm mm. quite ambitious. I know what I want. And so I'm I'm trying, like, to get there. How should I get there? How do I get there? Because, mm. yeah, like, uh, that's that's been my dream, actually. Um, okay. I had, like, so many dreams, but it was, like, my long-time goal to be working mm. in Geneva, so yeah, yep. luckily I'm here now, so I feel grateful. Oh my blessed. god, oh my <laughs> god, so congratulations, Carrot. I can't say a word for you. Ha. <sighs> okay, so back then, uh, we <laughs> want to talk about your bachelor degree uh, story. I knew you from uh, our university, in Broja University at that time. And then you also participated uh, in Global Volunteer from ISEC. Uh, I, I mean, like, yeah, maybe yeah. you also participated that time, right? And you also had internship, internship in one of United Nations at that time, like uh, in United Nations Information Center, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, can you tell me, please, about that, uh, that story? Uh, why you had set your goal since you were in the university i mean like you really know you really knew uh, what you really want to go at that time like you really know that okay my i have to build my path like 
this way. So how did you know your passion since you were in the university life? Um, uh, I think that's what people have to. I mean, that's how people should be because uh, in, on like yeah. when I was in high school, <laughs> when I was in high school, yep. I had a dream to to be a doctor. So I want to take like a medical ah. study. But then I decided, like, um, I don't think I want to, you know, have like a longer study. Mm-hmm. And uh, I decided, okay, let me just because I told you I I love uh, multicultural settings. Mm-hmm. At that time, I felt like, okay, uh, probably what suits me best is international relations. Mm-hmm. So I took that major, and you know, we learn. about international organizations as well yep. in our course yeah and um i learned i read about the united nations their area of work because there are a lot yep. of agendas right and yep. at that time with the isec so it's a youth um international youth organization yep um it was actually a random thing that I don't know. I, I couldn't remember, but I was with a friend, I think, and then we saw a booth because they they have like a booth, and ah, then yeah, 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 and then we asked a couple of things like, "What do you do?" And they told us like, "You can go have a some like an exchange program. You go abroad, mm. you work, you study, you help people." So I I I decided. Why not? Because mm-hmm. it sounds so interesting, and I would love to go to Europe as well. Because at that time, I've never been to Europe, and uh-huh. I sign up. So I sign up, and uh, yeah, and then actually I found a place uh, to go for an exchange. At that time, it was in yep. Poland, so I went okay. to Poland for a summer exchange program. I don't mm-hmm. remember. I think it was three months. So I was working uh, in. A, Like uh, how do you call it? Like a, I don't know, like a daycare for children uh, with uh, new families. So it was quite mm-hmm. nice because I also shared about Indonesia. They don't know anything about Indonesia, so it, it's very nice. It was a very nice experience. Uh, so that's uh, why, back again with my earlier statement, because like you yeah. know the charm of foreign place is just so interesting for me. That's why I, I uh-huh, want to continue uh-huh. this and also. You know, to spread about good news about Indonesia because yep. not so many people know about Indonesia, and, yeah. sure. and like they're a huge country, but I don't know why they don't know Indonesia. But of course, some of them they know. But yeah. so uh, I I wonder. So it means that that was your first time to Europe, Ka. Yes. Ah, uh, I thought you were traveling a lot in Europe, so that's why you chose Poland. <laughs> As your no. first experience, yeah, uh, okay. that's my first experience. That's that was oh, really I the see. first time I went to Europe. So the the first country I visited when I was in Europe, it was in Poland, uh-uh. and during my uh, summer, uh, no, during my exchange program. So I went yeah. to, so I went traveling to other cities, other countries yep. as well. So yep. that's how I. I also grew. I mean, not grew, but I I just love Europe. I feel. so comfortable uh-huh. and uh, i don't know europe is just super nice so <laughs> yep. i mean it's so yep. beautiful mm. and uh, yeah okay. it's different you know it's different than indonesia but indonesia yeah. is also beautiful like yeah sure <laughs> sure Ka, uh, let me yeah. read the comment from this day see this day. so how do i spell it the this day see uh, i and she said to you Hello, pretty lady. You are one of the best role models to our young sister in Indonesia. We are proud oh, of you, and nice. BTS will be too. Sending you a virtual BTS mail, Pura. <laughs> Hi. Is this your mom? <laughs> no, my mom doesn't have an Instagram. No, the, oh, she's so. my friend. Oh, she's da- oh, oh, I think okay. it's Daisy, right? Daisy. I couldn't oh, find yeah, the yeah. comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, Daisy, 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 yeah, 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 yeah Daisy, 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 okay, okay, okay. Uh, so thank, thank you, you so much, <laughs> I so thought much. that she is your mom, no, <laughs> luckily my mom is not on Instagram, <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, okay, so, uh, 
back then, when you were in after you got an exchange in Poland, and you continue yeah. to have internship right in one of United Nations in Indonesia, United Nations Information Center at that time, like for three months there. Yeah. Yes. How did you get? Yeah. How did you get that opportunity? Actually, Ka. Yeah. So um, remember during our bachelor, uh, actually they uh, asked students to mm -hmm. get an internship experience. So either you yep. do like a field. I don't know how you call it in English, like the yeah. the KKN. You yeah, know, like KKN. A, yeah. 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 <laughs> was the term in English. <laughs> um, so either that or you can choose internship, right? Mm. And as I said, when I when we learn through our study, I just want to work for the UN. And I think like one of the approach that I could, you know, that I could take at that time is to yeah. get an internship first because uh, I don't have uh, any experience so I couldn't apply for a job and also I, I'm still studying at that time so hmm. um, at that at that moment actually my mom was working at the UN one of the UN yeah. agencies there in Jakarta mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, she passed me some information about the internship uh, opportunity uh -huh. one of the UN okay. agencies in Jakarta it's called UNIC yeah. so United Nations mm -mm. on information center and I applied yep. uh, then yeah and I just did the internship <laughs> I was okay, nice that's... as well because, you know you met international people again the, yeah, the, yeah. the work setting that I like so yeah okay wow wow so, so I would like to say hi to Chums Chums Hello, Jums. <laughs> I think something is wrong with my my connection because I couldn't see any anything on my screen. Really, uh, I saw myself. like I I saw uh, Kak Santi and your other friends. <laughs> oh, hi guys. Okay. So, thanks for everyone who is following yeah. this. <laughs> so, Kak Rod, so uh, after you graduate from your bachelor degree, and you are you highlight. Uh, your work as international, I, I don't know, like you work in regional or foreign aid, regional organization or international organization at that time, right? You ever work in USAID as training assistant, you also work in Manchi Corps, and after that, mm -hmm. you maybe it's like an uh, internship when you were in master degree uh, level, mm -hmm. you uh, work at junior project officer. You, uh, and then after you graduate from your master degree in Italy, you came back again in Jakarta. You work at uh, the ASEAN Secretariat as the political corporation officer. And now, finally, you made it uh, to be the project <laughs> officer in International Telecommunication Union. Wonderful. So why you highlight yourself to work at international organization or something like that? Um, yeah, so, you know, like, it's a long process, right? But yeah. I think mm -hmm. I, um, it was just, I'm not, I don't want to call it lucky, but I think uh, I just love to be involved in development world. Uh, That's why I see. my I see. experience so far has been always mm. in this field. And, uh, uh, uh. you know, actually, I... Like the first time I went abroad mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Europe, it yep. was through this exchange program um, with ISEC, right? Yeah. And it was yep. also sort of like a development field because, you know, yeah. it's like a charity. Like it's a mm. small NGO. They're working with yep. children with dysfunctional families. And uh, I, I like this sort of social thing. I, I don't know. I've never... I never had experience with working with a private companies, for instance. Yeah. Uh, I assume it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just love to be in this field. That's why it's through the internship. Uh, also, yep. I chose United Nations in Jakarta and also now uh, here in Geneva. And with the USAID, as you mentioned, it was also about the climate change and fisheries. So, you know, uh, it's all linear. Yeah. So I know that some people, they have different, they probably might have different jobs in their mm -hmm. life spaces. But yeah, 
uh, I'm not sure. Probably because I know myself. Like I just love to be participate, yeah. to be engaged, to be contribute. to yep. be contributing to this uh, field so that's why it has been li- it's always been linear and uh yeah and now i'm i'm also enjoying the work here uh with the itu here in geneva okay so uh before we would like to uh, talk about pro- uh your p- current position in international telecommunication union i think you have yeah. been two years more in this uh in this company right Yeah, I would not say that as a company because it's a U- UN organization. So ah, it's like UN a, organization, uh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so it's actually, you know, like pe- when 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 we say UN, sometimes people got confused because UN is like an international organization, but organization, they do have yep. like a lot of, they do have a lot of bodies and agencies, right? So I yep. am working with ITU. So that's one uh-huh. of the UN specialists. agency one of no <laughs> you uh, itu is the specialized agency um for mm-hmm. the uh, information and communication technology oh, okay. so okay. why i like why i'm working with them now because at, uh, previously mm-hmm. i had an internship experience with them so yep. uh, yeah mm-hmm. that's true i yeah. was i was doing an internship before with this uh, organization Okay, Prior so bef- to- <laughs> before we talk uh, this part deeper, there's a comment from Matthew, Matthew Kirsang. I know him. I can't yeah. see the comment. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, like- uh, you know, right, Matthew? Of course, of course, yeah, Matthew. Ma- Matthew, Ki- Matthew He's Kirsang also working said, in this development field. Yes. Uh, Matthew Kirsang said, first of all, thank you for being an inspiration for us. In a position that you have now, how you see the concept of women empowering women, and what did you do to implement that? Oh, that's such a great question, and I know yeah. that Matthew also is one of the people who work uh, to empower gender uh, mainstreaming. So thank you, Matthew, for the question. Um, well, mm. I. Should I answer now, Evan? Or yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> um. Well, so uh, now, as uh, I was telling you guys just very briefly about what I'm doing right now, but uh, mm-hmm. basically in ITU, uh, the the mission is to connect everyone, um, of uh-huh. course, to to technology, through the information and communication technology. Um, in my work, we actually organize an annual tech event. And okay. we provide like a platform for people to showcase the work, uh, their their work using ICTs for development. Uh, and mm-hmm. you know, like like right now, Evan, like you are yeah. in Indonesia, I'm in Switzerland, but we can yeah. talk that thanks to technology, right? The world mm. is evolving, and technology is evolving as well, and it's very fast. Um, with my work. Uh, regarding the questions from Matthew, uh, we actually try to promote uh, gender mainstreaming as well in all of our I- ICT activities. Yeah. And yep. um, you know, sometimes, for instance, like with the, um, we organize workshops, and uh-huh. sometimes I don't know if you notice, but sometimes, most of the times, um, they only present or feature male speakers. like oh. very few of female speakers and we tr- we call it like we don't want any manual session so yeah. we try to uh, strive for gender balance so we uh. definitely encourage everyone to ensure that both men and women are represented in everything uh, uh. and actually uh, We are also now trying to do something with uh-huh. this gender activity. I cannot, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to go into further details, but uh, yep. just to, in summary, just to be brief, we definitely, uh-huh. we, we, we are working in this area, in this uh, activity to promote gender mainstreaming. So, yep. And I would oh, love also to, cool. you know, to engage with more women. So if you... Anyone who knows someone who uh, are working in this um, yeah. activity, like to promote gender mainstreamings, you know, because there are so many gender issues, you know. 
Um, so just feel free to contact with me because we would love to collaborate and um, to, I don't know, just to work together to, to achieve and to bridge the gender divide. So, yeah. Yep. That's so incredible, Karot. So, uh, I don't know. I'm, until right now, I'm still speechless on the way <laughs> no. you have been achieve all the things that you have said mm -hmm. to me. But uh, I'm really curious in your journey when you were in the university until now you are in your position. Like, mm -hmm. uh, do you ever face or did you ever face the failures? And can you tell me about what kind of the failures that you uh, you faced at that time? Um, yes, of course. I think everyone, of course, they're facing failures or has faced failures in one uh. of their times. Um, and um, like one, like for instance, of course, like yeah. I applied for a job, I applied for a scholarship, for instance, but then I got rejected. So. Ah. Of course, like uh, it's... really, you you ever got rejected in the scholarship, Kat? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, not 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 scholarship. Sorry. Well, scholarship? No, I don't. I, I don't remember. No, no, I don't think. Oh uh, so. yeah, that's true. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> oh, I God. know you because you are my idol. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm so sorry, Evan. Yeah, that's true. Actually, but actually, no, no, no. Actually, I, I, I have been only like I, I applied only one time for a scholarship because at that yeah. time, I, at that time, it was my mother again, my mom, who passed me mm -hmm. this information. So she sent me um, a scholarship. Like I don't know, it was like a, a information about scholarship, and she uh -huh. asked me, "Oh, hmm. why don't you apply?" And at that time, I was working, so I was like, "I mean, I just started." my first job and now you want me to to pursue a master's study so uh, uh -huh. that story they actually told me that i got shortlisted but yeah, they couldn't yeah. confirm yet because they had like such a limited number for applicants to receive a scholarship uh -huh. so i was like in a waiting yeah. list actually i was in a waiting uh -huh. list so at that time they couldn't confirm me but i was on a waiting list and i thought that i could i wouldn't get it but in the end, okay, they confirm like congratulations. But yeah, almost not made it. But yeah, I got rejected, you know, for internship, for jobs. So there are so many things that happened to me as well. So, Karot, uh, I'm still curious. Uh, you studied mm. in, in Italy, right? At, at, yes, uh, yes, in Italy, Italy yeah. at the time. And what kind of organization that maybe after, uh, after you graduated from university, and then mm -hmm. you work at USA at Merci uh, and also in uh, Cosi Milano, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. So, what's time like uh, in what organization that you finally end and you go to uh, Italy to study at so Merci there's... or at USA? Hmm? Uh... Uh, how how I mean like how long you your gap after you graduate from university? I from from the bachelor, I'm... from the bachelor. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No, so actually, you don't have gap. Yeah, actually, I don't have gap. So let me <laughs> let me share with you. So, I was waiting for my graduation. Uh, you know, we uh -huh. have we have Udicium, right? Udicium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's yeah. the term in English again. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. had I had my Udicium in December. So like officially, like I finished my thesis. You know, the, mm. uh, I got my thesis defense and blah blah blah. It was in December, and I was yep. waiting for my graduation. But um, uh -huh. my graduation was um, I couldn't even remember. But it was like after December, so the next year. Yep. But. I applied for a job already uh, after my Udicium. So I, yeah, I got my yeah. first job. So I was working there for eight months. But then uh, during yep. eight months, my mom sent me this this uh, information about the scholarship. So I applied. Uh -huh. And then I resigned. Then I went to Italy to pursue my master's study. Okay. Then again with my master program, they they also uh, ask the students to um, 
like to sort of like have an internship experience again and uh, mm -hmm. i was lucky because the university actually provided some organizations where you can get the internship so i got uh to that's that's why it's an italian it's an, sorry it's an italy uh, ngo in milano so i, I went yeah, to in milano, milano for yes for mm -hmm. doing this internship okay okay so you took, <laughs> yeah, so no uh, gap, you took no my... gap. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I still remember because like, oh my God, you just graduated at that time and then you finally, yeah. in the next year, you came to yeah. Italy like, oh my God, yeah. what's happening yeah, that's so with, with Marilyn? <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. you know, like your your friends, like Kak, Kak Santi, um, Kak Yanuan and the others, they are working in uh, in bank at that time. Mm. And then Kak Yiza also. And then I saw that your your journey is like you just graduate and you just uh, show your picture in the graduation and like in several months after like you came to Italy and you studied yeah. there. Oh my god! Like yeah, wow, it, was, wow. it was too sudden, right? It was too quick. Yeah, and actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's shout out to my parents <laughs> because they were the <laughs> one who motivated me. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't. I hadn't. I don't have that thought. Uh, at that time like I didn't uh, think that I'm gonna get master right away but I didn't I mean mm -hmm. I had a brief working experience at least yeah which I yeah, think is yeah. nice because uh, I don't know like I want to get the real work experience so yeah 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 so uh, if I'm not mistaken you took cooperation and development uh, for your master degree like so yes. anyway Ka, uh, why did you take that major because <laughs> you said to me you love the development area you love mm -hmm. to uh, grow with the kind of development so that's why you took that is it mm -hmm. true or not yes that's that's true wow. and also also um because um, you know in in the international relations uh, yep. co uh major study that we had at the university we had a minor mm -hmm. uh we had a like a minor course and we chose international My, yeah. development mm -hmm. right so yeah. i i, I mm -hmm. took international development and i like actually the, the everything about the international development and mm -hmm. um when my mom sent me this information so she knew like she knew that i i love this field i i would love to work uh, related uh -huh, to this field so she, she sent me this this vacancy that actually has this major about uh -huh. development and cooperation so when i when i was reading the uh, the course and the brief summary of uh, the university and everything it seems like oh that's nice and also i love <gasps> italy <laughs> so i, I know, I know. <laughs> and, and you know like that's why i would love to people just apply you know yeah, like, yeah. There's no harm because as long as it's free, I mean, of course, like I think most yeah. of the most mm -hmm. of the times it should be free. You just have yeah. to, of course, yeah, you need to write an essay, but just submit your CV and that's it. Yep. So it's yep. very simple. I mean, yep. if you got rejected, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I was disappointed as well before, well, with the internship experience when I was applying for something and then I mm. got that rejection. So of course it belittles me but um it's okay it's a part of the process mm -hmm. you know that um failure is just like a stepping stone for our future success yeah so. yeah yeah okay guys so i would like to give you uh some depiction Kak. because okay. now nowadays in indonesia is talking about the viral news from modi ayunda uh, she just graduated from one <laughs> yeah. of university in United yeah. States of America, yeah. and everybody are to everybody is talking about her. And yeah. you know, guys, it's, you you don't need too far. You don't need to think too far to see who is Modi Ayunda. Uh, Modi Ayunda. This is the one who's speaking with me. Is the instant <laughs> for Modi Ayunda? You know, like when we are talking about uh, her mother from Modi Ayunda, uh, give support always give support to Mauti and give the direction on how uh, she can, she could uh, take master degree, she could take uh, the bachelor degree in Oxford University. It's also because of her mom. Now, uh, the one that I'm talking with, you are with Marilyn Gracie Dabuta. Your mom helps you a lot in the way you, in the way you create your direction, right? That's so, correct. That's so yeah. true, yeah. So this is but, true. But, like, 
but mm. i think evan like i think thank you but i think you're exaggerating like i'm <laughs> no, obviously no. not as cool as she is but i just want to highlight because i think you know like at the end of i mean in general i think every mm. parents want the best for their kids yep. right yep. so mm. and we i'm lucky because both my parents my mom and my dad they are very supportive in whatever mm. we're doing and yep. wh- like whatever we choose like they just support us because i know in some cases the parents really impose the kids like hey you should be a doctor or you should be an athlete or you know yeah. but yeah. yeah but i think it's every parents i'm i'm sure they want the best for the kids and also the children i think if if that's the thing if you really have that goal uh if you have that mindset like yep. you, you want to achieve something and just just do it and just continue doing it you know and mm. failures don't be scared with failures because as i said it's just you know everyone has failure yep, so. yep. So Karo so are, uh, I want to talk about your project officer in International Telecommunication uh, Union which yeah. is uh, you just told me that you came to this organization because you had an internship before when you were in master degree level at that time yeah. uh, after you graduated from the master degree level at that time and yeah. then I mean like you built uh, the networking right Like when you were in internship and you built uh, the networking and finally you understood about the culture in the organization and afterward you just applied to uh, to this organization and finally this organization met up your dream to live there to work there and uh, anyway so with that process and now in during uh, your process in the un uh, in ITU sorry in ITU did you also face like uh what I say culture shock or something mm. that maybe I don't know like you have traveled a lot uh during your life after you graduate from the university and did yeah. you still have the culture shock when you were working with your international people uh so culture work in terms of working or in yeah general? yeah in working for work um actually no but you know like mm-hmm. everyone has their own work style i think yeah, yeah um and i feel happy because actually my team here in and uh, my team here in geneva with my small mm-hmm. team they are very nice people they're very nice colleagues uh-huh. very supportive especially my supervisor she's mm-hmm. really a nice boss like um as a person she's just very genuine and always uh-huh. support you so that's why i'm i'm also thankful because thanks to her i'm here because um actually at fun uh, when i finished my master study i went back to jakarta right uh, to uh-huh. work yeah i was working with mercy okay. corp yeah it's uh, yeah and when I, it's an ngo and when i work with them i I still I still you know I still have that dream right I want to work Yeah with yeah and uh, of course I applied some UN jobs also in Jakarta but unfortunately at that time I didn't get it so okay. uh, I keep trying and also I want to work uh, with the UN at the headquarters I don't uh-huh. want to go too far to New York because it has like a similar yeah. vibe with Jakarta so I thought mm-hmm. oh I love Europe they have one in geneva so yep. i try to apply 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 but it's just so difficult very competitive so yeah i thought maybe internship would be the best idea as you said networking is very important so i thought uh-huh. okay let me try internship and at that time actually my dad against the idea of me doing another internship because he was like you have been working why are you doing another internship again you know what i'm uh-huh. saying like, Yeah. Like because yeah. I have I had the work experience before and I did already couple of internship yeah. experience. So yeah. he was like, "Why do you want to why, why do you want to have internship uh in 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 again although it's yeah, in Geneva yeah. but why? And it's unpaid. So that's a shame." Uh, yeah. But because I know what I want and I said like, "No, I think this is could be like an open door for an, uh, uh, for future Uh, opportunities or career opportunities yep. and 
that's yep. why actually I went there. I decided no, you know I I wow. wanna I wanna do it. So I I took wow. risks actually. Wow. I went to Geneva for internship, yeah. and yeah. then I built my network. As you said, it's mm-hmm. a very important when and and I always told everyone, even if it is unpaid or even it's a paid internship. I know it's yep. called internship, but um, I feel like hard work is the key to success. So yep. you have to treat it. You have to treat your internship professionally. So yep. it's like mm. daily work. Just like do yeah. your job, be initiative. So through that internship experience, my supervisor and my team they saw uh, uh, my performance. They thought yep. that you know. Like oh, this person she's very motivated, eager to learn. She's initiative. Mm. So this oh, skills and this <laughs> this quality that what they're looking for. That's why I I always said, guys, in whatever you're doing, I mean not just internship, of course, it it will lead you to something better, of course, because as I said, mm. hard work will never betray you, and it's just, it's just a key to success. So and again, yep. of course, you need to be you need to be humble, keep your feet grounded, because you yeah. know that's just how you. Gonna be success, I think. I mean, I'm not saying myself as a success, but everyone has their own definition of success. But yeah, 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 so yeah. Story. Oh my <laughs> god, I miss, uh, I misunderstand it because a bit because I thought that when you were and when and you were everyone... in master degree in Italy and you uh-huh. continue to have a uh, internship and you went oh, in Switzerland, no, no, yeah. So I, I, it, I just been, knew yeah. that. You came back to Indonesia and then yes. uh, you applied for internship working. at that time. Yeah, oh, I was working I and then my contract got finished. I mean, it, yeah, I think it was finishing. Yeah, and then I, yeah. I was trying to find some jobs, but also I I have that uh, dream still to be in Europe yeah. or working with the UN. And actually, at one, wow. I didn't mm-hmm. apply for for a job here, so they called me. They offered me a position. From the ITU. Yeah, thanks to the the internship experience that I said because because oh. yeah because oh they. God, they... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So so I am now working with the same team when I did my internship back then. Uh, when I yeah. Oh my god. Does it make sense? I don't know if it's like too confusing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like you, uh, you know, Ka, actually, if you say to me that when you were in interna- internship in Geneva, yeah. Switzerland, yeah. Uh, as Indonesian people, always think like how much I have to pay yeah. for the living cost in Switzerland, yeah. right? Yeah. This is the highest uh, currency in Europe, and everything yeah. there is so yeah. expensive. Yeah, it is. So, that's so why it I, actually, it relates to yeah. your question about the culture shock. I mean, in terms of yeah, working, yeah. I, I, as I have shared with you, um, but in terms of general, yeah, that's a really, really big shock for me. It's just so expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> Even when my parents or when my mom visited me in Geneva, she was just like, uh-huh. oh, "This is so expensive." <laughs> oh my god, she was just she was calculating and and converting everything to rupiah. Ca- so oh my god, it's gonna be like, yeah, a lot. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Oh my god, so uh, <laughs> this is the this is the instance that. Uh, you pursue something bigger on your life, and you really know your path on how you uh, achieve that dream to become true. But anyway, Ka, but after you had internship for six months or seven months there in uh, ITU, and then you came back to Indonesia as a, as uh, in ASEAN, yeah, in ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta as the political cooperation officer for yeah. one year and a half, right? Uh, yeah, and a half. Two, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, did you still did you still keep contact with them, the people in Geneva, Switzerland? Uh, I I sent an email to them. I just like you know ah. I, I I I sent an email to my supervisor. So when I was working with ASEAN, I sent an, like an email to them saying that um um I still want to work with the UN. So let me know. Ah. Keep me posted in case you have any future. Um, Vacancies uh, available that fits my skills. Yep. 
So I let them know. Uh-huh. Yeah, but just just that, like just sent an email and that's it. And then uh-huh. um, when I was working, so I have like a contract as well with the ASEAN Secretariat. I was yep. working mm. and then suddenly I receive a call and it's written like Switzerland. So I was like, who? Who's this? So I pick it up and it turned out it was my supervisor. And she was like, how are you doing? And then, yeah, she offered me this uh, position. Wow, oh my God, congratulations once again, Kak Rut. Oh, thank you, you Evan. <laughs> oh my God, oh my I feel God. a bit odd because I want to catch up with you as well. But then this is like, <laughs> I don't know when did, like when was the last time we see each other? I think it must know, be like long time past, back. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, yeah, and then you suddenly asked me, I thought like it's just like going to be a normal call between us, but then oh, it's for the <laughs> IG live, like oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, because I always talk with Mbak Santi, can I ask uh, Karut to have in my loop? And then uh, mm. she said that, just, just ask her, she will yeah, be just okay ask to me, share. <laughs> Because like, oh my gosh, should I, should I, every time I want to ask you, like, should I? Because, you know, like, I'm, I'm really, really impressed you. Like, you are, you are the one that I adored since I was in the university. And then you are the one, like, uh, I know that you are very strong. And then, you know, uh, at the, uh, uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. yesterday I contacted, uh, I got contact from Kanya Dipya. And yeah, she said to me that, why did you not create like this one for the alumni networking to international relation uh, mm. department in our mm-hmm. university and I mm-hmm. said to her I don't know like I ever contact one of uh, from the international relation department yeah. but maybe they still not respond us about this so that's why maybe mm-hmm. in my loop here in my cerita dari seberang can uh, can influence people that our alumni is actually the one who very in- Incredible! I know that from your uh, from your year, I think like uh, I also see Kak Hari. Uh, he stay in uh, he live mm. in Korea, South Korea, right? Mm. And now Mbak Santi is also still studying in Japan. Kak Yanuar mm. also still study in Denmark. Which is your year is actually very incredible people that I have ever seen. Oh no, no, God. I think your badge is also. <laughs> filled with amazing students and I am yeah, sure yeah. they are everywhere right they are scattered also all over the world doing amazing things mm. but no I think also you have fun you know mm. keep up this good work and uh, that's actually a good idea to yeah. you know continue providing this platform so the same thing as I'm doing here right now in Geneva is mm. You know, we are providing a platform because it's important yeah. to engage, to continue the discussions and to keep sharing. Because at that time, when we were in, in, the, in the university, we couldn't yep. really find that information, right? Yeah, it's just, sure. It's, it's just sure. so difficult. I don't know. Nowadays, yeah, 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 know yeah. everything is so easy. Um, mm. And the other day, I mean, it was already a long time back, but... Yeah. So me and my, like my friends and I, we created some also um, an Instagram account to provide this platform. And yeah. one of the things that being highlighted was um, the important uh, mm. role of the, the important aspect of role model because we don't we don't really yes. get yeah. that I, you know when we were in the yeah. university. I could don't you agree feel? more. Yeah. 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 So like even with the Isaac, it was just like a random, yeah. I think it like my friend and I, we were just walking and then we saw the booth and then that's how we mm. know about this. Yeah. So yeah, Evan, I will support you for all the good things that you do, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kak, Karot, anyway, so uh, now Indonesia is talking about the g- digital literacy that oh, yes. uh, we can yes. tell like Indonesia talk up digital. If you know mm. that, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So in your project in uh, ITU, which is your project, will work internationally, right? So yeah. how uh, how I mean, like, uh, what's an important thing to know better about the digital literacy and how, how to create people to uh, finally understand that the digital thing is a very important for them to the near future. Do you see yeah. that? Mm. Yes, it's also one of the 
one of the work that we do here and we actually hmm. work as well with the Indonesian government and uh-huh. they do have this initiative uh, this initiative called cyber kreasi i think yeah uh, cyber kreasi yeah mm-hmm. yeah right and yep. they are doing this digital literacy for people in indonesia i mean it's it's related to education and education yep. is a very important pillar if you want to develop for yourself uh-huh. for the country so of course it's important um we are providing uh, a platform by yep. contacting also stakeholders to organize their sessions so this is also one of the ways we try to raise awareness about yep. digital literacy and maybe some organizations they do help them they they provide trainings uh hmm. skill uh trainings courses so i mean i couldn't agree more like it's it's very important for for people to have digital literacy and again like education is just so important so of course yes. um yeah. we we do that yeah okay karut uh, i hope you have like best version on yourself in the next Ooh. future i hope that i, I mean, can see you in geneva switzerland right of course yes of course come visit me no, so anyway absolutely. do you have do you have a lot of friends from indonesia there Huh, interesting question. <laughs> um, I do. Yes. Um. Uh, you know, that's the thing, Evan. That's the thing. Like I want to see more people, uh more Indonesian people everywhere, not just mm-hmm. in the UN, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um because if you go abroad, you could have yep. thought yourself as you are like as an ambassador for Indonesia yep. because yep. you you spread Uh, information about Indonesia. Yes, yeah, sure. And I, I do have a friend actually. Uh, she is also working uh, at the UN. So yeah, she's uh-huh. from Indonesia. Wow. In ITU itself, I think only two people from Indonesia, including me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so wow. maybe you could be the the third one, Evan. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> Come. Okay. Okay, so I hope that I can see you in Geneva, Switzerland after COVID nineteen. Like yeah, I don't know, yes. like Let this me know. this this, <laughs> pa- this pandemic is totally uh, make us has borders to go abroad or something like that. Yeah, Karot. So uh, I can't thank you enough for your opportunity for your thank time you. for sure. Yeah. So anyway, Karot, uh, Kar- before we close this uh, this cerita dari seberang. Can you share to me like the last statement to us? But before that, I really want to share like the I really want to resume what we are talking about, like what we are talking about from the beginning until the last. Because maybe all of us may uh, join in the middle or in the last. So guys, uh, today I'm talking with Kak Ruth Merlin Grace Dabutar. She is my senior when she was in the university, in bachelor degree in International Relations Project University. And she is the depiction that uh, she highlights to work in foreign aid, international organization or something like that. And she, now she finally uh, achieved her dream to work in ITU, which is this is part of United Nations. In hard quarter, I uh, don't know. Uh, yeah, in hard quarter, in Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, oh one of the hard quarters. Yeah, one of hard quarter. Uh, <laughs> in Geneva, Switzerland, and she is Batakness. You know, like uh, she is Indonesian. <laughs> yeah, I I can't say enough to uh, give uh, her achievement after she graduated from the university. And you know what? She highlighted from the university because she knew the direction. Where where she must go? Uh, I mean, like where she should go at that time. Uh, you know what? She uh, participate in summer exchange in Poland through the ISEC program, and then also she participate. Uh, she uh, went to internship in Jakarta in United Nation, uh, one of the United Nation too. And afterwards, uh, she came to US it one of the foreign it, foreign it, and. She finally met to study in uh, Italy for the cooperation and development for the master degree level. After that, she spread her wings to go abroad and to work there as a uh, internship 
in ITU and now she made it to work here almost like three years in Geneva, Switzerland. So guys, if you really want to know more or if you're still curious how she met uh, her journey until right now and if you really want to know how do you uh, suppose yourself in participating on in working in the United Nations, you can contact her through this uh, through her Instagram. She is very welcome. She is very welcome to be asked. So Karot, uh, I'm so <laughs> lucky. I'm so lucky to have this opportunity. So please give us the last statement for you <laughs> and uh, from you, sorry, from you, uh, maybe f- that all of us will get the good inspiration or motivation from your side. Time is yours. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Evan. First, first, thanks. Thanks a lot to you. But I mean, last statement, I mean, I don't know. It does sound so serious. I don't, I don't <laughs> have any statement. <laughs> But, you know, it's just a pleasure for me to share my uh, experience, at least my personal experience. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that maybe I just want for everyone to to... Probably just to believe, first to believe within yourself and mm-hmm. don't, don't be afraid uh, uh-huh. and just dream, dream high, dream like whatever you want, just, yep. just do it uh, and uh, yep. back again, the key is to be persistent of course and to be yep. committed with your work and yeah. it will lead you somewhere because again, hard work is the key to success and the best is yet to come so mm. yeah. just uh, trust yourself and be confident uh, you mentioned about the failures yeah um, it's okay don't be disappointed but it's important yep. to to um, take lessons from the failure because otherwise you are paving a way to for yet another failure right so yeah um, sure. just keep trying keep trying and uh, don't give up and yeah yeah <laughs> thank you thank you Karot once again thank you very much for your time thank you, you to talk with uh, to talk with me and also to share everything from your personal experience in this site I hope that you are still uh, you are uh, have such great journey ahead and oh, I thanks. hope that you are always healthy and I'm so I, I'm still curious on the way your uh, your life in the Geneva Switzerland of course <laughs> so, thank you Karun thank, thank you, you Evan. thank you so much bye 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 bye